But you are wanted dead or not alive. Yeah, sure, let's talk about that, shall we? Lu Wang is indeed back in the new re newly released game developed by Flying Wild Hawk, Shadow Warrior 3. But does it run good, and how's the game in general? Well, we're gonna talk about the performance later, but before that, a quick game opinion by me. I'm going to use educational props this time, so pay attention. So far I spent the most time in game benchmarking it and I would say I have around uh, 2 hours of gameplay. First of all you cannot, absolutely not compare this game with the previous predecessor, Shadow Warrior 2. Shadow Warrior 2 was a whole new type of game compared to the first. It had open world, co-op, a lot of upgrades, a whopping 70 weapons or so. It had elemental stuff, two weapons to the upgrades and to the enemies and so much more. Now back to today in Shadow Warrior 3 this is all gone. Because Flying Wild Hawk sent Shadow Warrior back to its roots. The game is now just like the first Shadow Warrior game, which was released back in 2013. It's not open world anymore, it's one straight line with a story, arenas, new enemies and so on. But there is some new stuff, like wall running, a grappling hook, and a more streamlined upgrade system, which in turn has less upgrades for weapons or low rank himself. But on the bright side, Hoji and Zilla are also back. We know Zilla from previous game and Hoji from the first, I guess. So I think he's been missed a lot. So I'm glad he's back. I am kinda annoyed that with every new enemy you encounter you get like a little cutscene that introduces the enemy, how it looks like and what the name of the enemy is. I don't think it's so useful to do that but yeah you get used to it. But yeah talking about cutscenes it's not the cutscenes aren't supported on ultra wide. You get like bars. It's not black bars, but it's like a, a picture in the background or something instead of black bars. Either way, of course, the hack and slash part of the game is still fun, extremely fun and addicting. But the blood and the gore has been downgraded. Something like that. I mean, visual-wise, it's like more cartoonish now, I think. I don't know how to word it, but yeah, that's, that's what I choose. Um, another big change that happened is the voice actor of Lo Wang. There has been extremely much criticism since the release of the trailers and gameplay trailers a lot of people don't like the new voice actor um, yeah they changed it and it's not that good in my opinion so I kind of agree the humor and the way he says it it's not that convincing so the joke the joke he's trying to make is like on the edge of being cringe 
But um, yeah, not all as bad. It's like 50-50. There are some good lines and good jokes, uh, memes and parodies to other games. Let's go to the next part of the video, the benchmarks, how well does the game perform. Before I show you the numbers, this is the test run I did. It's the part after the tutorial, it's actually um, the first arena you encounter. And when you finish this arena you also unlock the grappling hook. Powerful now, do you? Huh? Do you? Hiding in some hidey hidey hole waiting for me to save your sorry ass from a horde of bloodthirsty demons? Just get me, would you please? How many holes? Can Bleeding to death? You can always file a formal complaint. And someone will get in touch with you in the next 48 hours. So how exactly are we going to kill the dragon with Hoji's mask? By weaponizing it, of course. I don't think Hoji would appreciate that. Yes, but he's dead, so he doesn't get a vote. Alrighty, the test system I used as the usual, it's my game system and work system that I use every day. It has the Ryzen 5 2600 on a B450M Pro 4 motherboard of ASRock. And it's using 16GB of DDR4 RAM with a speed of 3200 and a latency of 14. The GPUs we're testing today is the XFX RX480, which has 8GB of VRAM, the Reference 6700 XT from AMD and the RTX Founder Edition 3070 from NVIDIA, each with their corresponding driver version. AMD had a driver update for Shadow Warrior 3 which is the version 22.2.3 and Nvidia did not so there we are on the version 511.65 so this is a quick overview what I've tested on two resolutions I tested the three GPUs on every quality setting on 1440p ultrawide I also tested extra for the FSR settings and DLSS on high quality and the same for 1080p but only for the RX480 uh, I tested the FSR.
and that was it overall the 3070 and the 6700 xd are neck on neck in most quality settings and resolutions they both have trouble to apply dlss or fsr on 1440p ultra wide as the average fps are almost the same across every dlss or fsr setting the rx480 though this little beast still has some balls in my opinion not for the ultra wide resolutions but on 1080p for sure it's still a six year old 1080p card after all but thanks to fsr you can get some extra frames on any resolution the card reaches 60 fps on 1440p ultra wide low and on 1080p each quality without any upscaling so i guess the visual downgrades are good for something anyway i thank you for watching and i'll see you guys on the next benchmark video